tests at the Institute of Naval Medicine tell their own story. I'm glad I can sit down while we're doing this. Just adjust this for a minute. Just checking the pacemaker, actually. Is he ticking, Mike? Yes, looking fine. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Right, we're going to dress okay. you. Okay. Passion killers. <laughs> Come to the surface by releasing the seat belt and stay in the water until we tell you to get out. Good stuff. We've got some nice baseline data. Okay? Yeah, go. Okay, there we go then, Duncan. There we go. This water, by the way, is at 10 degrees Celsius. That's a typical temperature off our coastline on a sunny day in June. Even when protected by warm clothing, a person can only expect to hold their breath for about 10 seconds in water below 15 degrees Celsius. This initial cold shock response, an overwhelming need to gasp in air, is often followed by uncontrolled and rapid breathing. At this stage, the chances of breathing in water and drowning are highest, particularly with wave splash in choppy or rough seas. Adding to the problems, an extended period of rapid breathing flushes carbon dioxide out of the body. This can cause muscle cramps. Not surprisingly, the heart beats faster. At the same time, the outer blood vessels narrow to conserve body heat. Unfortunately, these responses combine to push blood pressure up. This increases the risk of heart failure and brain hemorrhage. Looking very good indeed. Keep it up. Luckily, cold shock usually lasts for only two or three minutes. As the body adjusts, the heartbeat and respiration slowly return to more normal levels. Clearly, the best chance of survival is not to swim until breathing has settled. Well done, Dan. Coping with the first few minutes, however, is no guarantee of continued survival over the first half hour. In cold water, even strong swimmers have difficulty coordinating swim stroke with breathing. That's good. Keep it there. That's nice. Once again, the temperature is just 10 degrees. Most people keep their head up to avoid the cold, leaving the body in an awkward vertical position. But much worse than that, the arms and legs actually become weaker and more rigid as they cool down. Over a period of time, no one can manage anything like their distance in warm water. As poor headway is made, panic can only make matters worse. Unfortunately, drowning is all too often the inevitable result. Okay, Sharon, stop there. Stop there. Go across to the side. Okay, Sharon, that's it. Well done. Just rest there. Not a bad effort for a swimmer in a test tank, 